they have yoked themselves that even if this fails, uh, it fails inside of him and it will surely bring him glory. But that cannot become the lot of an individual until that individual have come to see Christ the way he ought to see him. It is this understanding of Christ. You know, we talk about a personal yoking. We talk about a personal, um, um, a deliberate submission of our lives to keep following him. You don't follow what you are not sure of. You don't yoke your... How many of us check the leg of the chair that you are sat sitting on when you came to church this morning? How many of you check the leg? Eh? How many of us check the leg? When we learn today, you are taking your, Did you check the leg? How many legs was that chair supposed to have? How many does he have? Are you sure? Why? Eh? Do you know that several of us sat on that chair with assumption? It's an assumption that it is has four legs. If the ushers were cleaning the church and they mistakenly broke one of them and they forgot to replace it and they put it there, when you come to church and you sat on it, what will it do? You know, you did not check because something says to you it must have four legs. But if as you came to church, somebody sat down and you hear bagada, and said, what happened? They said, the leg of that chair is bad. And somebody at the back, bagada. Somebody here at bagada. When you are going to, what do you do? Eh? You're about to say, bad jisikoto. Uh-huh. So you will check the chair very well. Say, let me check this one. Let's I fall. Because if you yourself sit on it and it falls down, bagada, what would they say? They say, how ah, you still supposed to have checked down? Stop, stop shouting. Do you know that several people are in church that have not come to a junction? They have not come to a conclusion. They have not, they have not seen the true personality of this Christ. And so they supposedly are following Jesus assumptiously. Is there an English word like that? Eh? The law. Am I right? I'm wrong. Presumptuously. I'm sorry. I've forgotten that uh, there are laws in this place. They follow presumptuously. And you will know a person who is following presumptuously. How does he behave? He does not throw the totality of his life to follow a sheep. He constantly have a backup plan. Should this fail, there's a backup. Should this fail, there's a backup. But for those who have, who have come to see the reality in this thing, something keeps saying to them, it cannot fail. Are we together? This cannot fail. So I suppose that discipleship starts, followership of Jesus starts, personal submission of one's life to follow Jesus, to follow his word, to follow his principles, to follow whatsoever he says. It starts when you come to discover who he is. And can I say to you, several people have not sat down to ask themselves, so is this Jesus. So we will be starting this day. Maybe that's what I just felt that we need to see. Acts chapter 20, verse 12. What does it say? Acts chapter 20, verse 12. No, Acts chapter 12, verse 20. Sorry. Acts 12, 20. Now, there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, 
and they ask him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a, gr a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world we keep, we keep it to eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him will my father honor. Verse 26. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. I wonder whether there's another translation of that verse 26. Um, if you have. Is there any other translation? Verse 26, John 12, 26. What does it say, Isma? Yes. He must follow me. He must follow me. All right. They still use the word follow. Which other word could we have used for, for follow? Because discipleship is actually a personal decision to follow Jesus. He must do what? He must go with me. And going with Jesus, following Jesus has several implications, but we will not be talking about that this day. We just want to discuss this day the understanding that facilitates a followership. A, a understanding that facilitates a yoking. The understanding that, that enhances a locking of your life around Jesus. The understanding that, that, that facilitates a total submission of one's life unto Jesus. Because, you know, Jesus will never constrain anyone to follow him. You know, at times, sorry, I used to think that Baba is weak. But I see that Baba is not weak. Baba is only waiting for everyone. Eh? The Bible said in John chapter 1 verse 12, he came unto his own. His own did not receive him. Eh? He, they didn't receive him. In Luke chapter 8, when he delivered that man of Gadara, did you remember? And the whole Gadara came out. They told him to go away. And he was going away. I was saying, how can you go away, sir? But I said, I saw in the scriptures that Jesus never constrained any man to follow him. It has to be by your choice. We are all object and being of choice. So the decision to follow, the, the conclusion to follow will be, is basically yours. Are we together? The decision to follow is yours. He will not force you to follow. In fact, he never forces any man to follow him. So, if Jesus will not force me to follow him, if Jesus will not constrain me, to, you know, look at Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Did you remember Luke chapter 9, verse 23? What does it say? Luke 9, 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Are we there? Luke 9, 23. He said, Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow him. Did you see that? Did you see that scripture? He was talking to every one of them. But you will also see them, you will also see Jesus giving them an option. He was giving them an option. Where did I see the option? 
the word if. What is the meaning of if? Eh? The law. What's the meaning of if? You are doing, I'm not hearing you. You are doing like this. What's the meaning of if? You have a choice. There is no compulsion. There is no dragging. It's your choice. Jesus said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him by himself, with himself, for himself. What did he say? Let him deny himself. But like I said this morning, what we just want to sow is understanding that facilitate this. I'm praying that God will help us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some few verses before that, something happened. Look, some few verses before that that we read, something happened. The same Luke chapter 9 from verse 18. Luke chapter 9 from verse 18. And as and it happened, as he was praying alone, that the disciples joined him and he asked them, saying, Who do the crowds say that I am? So they answered and said, John the Baptist. But some say Elijah. And others said that one of the old prophets have risen. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said, The Christ of God. Let's take that account from the Matthew, uh, Matthew record. I think the, the account in the book of Matthew should be in Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13. I want to pick a phrase from there. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? What did you think Jesus was asking of? Eh? What did you think Jesus was asking of? I suppose that Jesus was asking his disciples. You know, it was the disciples that normally goes in between the crowd. It was the disciples that were mingling with the crowd. It was the disciples that would be hearing what the crowd are doing at their floor group. You know, it was the, it was the disciple of Elisha, Gehazi, that entered the house of that Shunammite woman that knew what was going on. So Jesus wanted to have a feel of what the crowds, what they were saying about him. Jesus himself knew that these people, if they have seen him the way they ought to have seen him, they will not be laboring for what they are laboring for. They will have been laboring for what they ought to be laboring for. So Jesus asked them, who do they say that I am? Come and listen to what they said. So they said, some said John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus now turned to his disciples, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Let's stop there. You know that we, we are saying that we want to look at a scene that enhances our followership. Jesus just wanted to check you know, we don't know how long Jesus has been with his disciples when this was happening. We don't know for how long. We don't know for how long they have been going out together. We don't know for how long they have been going in and out together. But he just wanted to have a feel. Have you come to a junction that you have, you have understood my true personality, who I am? Because the crowd... 
they are still giving several things of who you are not. John the Baptist, Kenikon, Kenikon, even a miracle worker, a problem solver. But he turned to them, you have been with me. You have been going in and out with me. Who do you say that I am? And it was Brad Peter that answered. I wish that Brad Peter did not talk for others to talk, for he has called them aside one by one. And he was saying, Wale Lays on me, who am I? Uh, Matron, who am I? Eh? Dr. Adenugua, who am I? If he has been asking them one by one, I suppose that the answer they would have been giving him would differ. We differ. Because what brought each person to Jesus is what they are saying about Jesus. In John chapter 6, it was the food, it was the bread, it was the fish that they ate that pulled people to Jesus. But Jesus was not happy that people were coming to him because of bread, because of fish, because of showables. He said, no, that is not the reason why I am there. If you are still seeing me as somebody who will end your, your hunger, who will solve your problem, problem solving is not the core. It's just one of the addendums. Don't specialize in this. So he asked his disciples, he said, who do you, you, who am I to you? And Brad Peter spoke. What did Brad Peter said? Brad Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the Christ. Excuse me, sir. Who was the one speaking? Peter was not speaking arbitrarily. Peter was not speaking flimsily. There was a personal revelation of Jesus to Peter. There was a personal opening of Peter's eyes to behold who Jesus is. There is a personal opening of Peter's heart to comprehend the personality of this person. This is not just an ordinary human being. You are the Christ. And what is the meaning of Christ? Eh? Christ is not the Savior. Christ is the anointed one. But aside that, you are the son of the living God. Little wonder that personal insight that Peter had concerning Jesus facilitated Peter's followership of Jesus. So you will discover that Peter was not following Shuken Shukeli. Peter was not following slow-footedly. Peter was following with the totality of his life. If you also go to that account in John chapter 6, if you go to that John chapter 6, John chapter 6, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 6, are we there? Come and see. Um, but for time, I would have wanted to read um, a, a, a long verse, but let me just, uh, let me just jump to verse 60. I'll read from verse 60 to verse 71. John chapter 6, from verse 60 to verse 71. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then, if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. 
For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who did not believe, and who will betray him. And he said, Therefore, I have said to you, no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? Verse 66. Who answered? Verse 68. Who answered again? Eh? Can we read the submission of Simon Peter together again? One to go. But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Verse 69. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Did you see the submission of Brad Peter? Eh? Did you see that Peter's followership of Jesus, this was the platform. Peter's decision to follow through thick and thin, this was what facilitated it. He saw Christ. He understood Christ beyond the physical. He said, you have the words of eternal life. So where am I going? And verse 69 said, also, you know when Peter used the word we, eh, everybody in the team hide under the we. Because Thomas did not, you know, Thomas will not, Thomas does not, Thomas does not believe like that, though. Thomas does not believe like that, though. Eh? They said that he has risen, he has risen, he has risen. We saw him. What did Thomas say? Eh, 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 stop it. Me, I'm a factual person. I deal with facts. I'm a scientist. Eh? I base my, eh, uh, eh, uh, I base my, what did you say, doctor? I break my what? I base my conclusion on inference. So, me, I don't believe all these things that you are saying. And what did Jesus do? He came back for him. And he said, uh, uh, Thomas, come and touch me. Come and do this. Come and do this. Come and. And Thomas was saying, Yeah, 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 my master. I said, yeah. You know, at times I, I used to think that if I was Jesus, when I was coming, I would have gone to the market and buy a good koboko to first beat him so that his head will go back to factory setting. How long did Jesus stay with them? Three and a half years. And he could not yet grasp this thing that we are talking about. And do you know that because several of them, they couldn't, they couldn't comprehend what this, many keeps going away. And you know it touched me that even those that were going away, the master was not running after them. The master was not pursuing them because the master knew that what will sustain you in disciple, what will start discipleship what will sustain you in discipleship is this constant knowing. Listen, I said, what we compare you to follow, what we make you to keep following is this constant sin. Once that sin goes off, following stops. Once that sin is no longer there, following stops. But for Peter, constantly the sin was there. And little wonder, he became one of the outstanding of the first twelve. Why? Because he was constantly seeing that this is not an ordinary human being. This is the Christ, the son of the living God. And because he also has the words of eternal life, excuse me, I will be a fool not to follow what he says. And that is the yoking that we are talking about. 
That is the yoking that we are talking about. Your followership of Christ will be weak to the extent to which you have not fully discovered Christ. Your followership of Christ will be flimsy to the extent that you have, you know, when they were now going to start the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, what does it say? When they also want to reveal Christ for that to us, Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Does anybody have, I think it was the amplified or the easy to read that paints that picture very well. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 1, 1 and 2. What does it say? Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. Is anybody there with amplified or easy or message? I think it was message. Yes, it's his message version. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. Does anybody have message version of the Bible? We are not hearing you, man. Verse 1 and 2. Yes. 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 Listen, did you note what they are saying? What did they say? This son, this Christ, yes? Perfectly, yes, ma. Mirrors God. Go on, man. Did you note what they are saying? I wish we are noting the issues that they are raising for us about Christ. Maybe God desires to also re-envision each one of us this day so that we can have a personal pursuit of Christ. They said this son he is stamped with God's image. So in a nutshell who are we dealing with? We are dealing with God. I didn't ask you to sit down. Okay, she obey your husband and disobey pastor. Are we together? Who are we dealing with? We are dealing with God. You know that when the angel came to Mary, he said they will call his name what? Emmanuel. What is the meaning of Emmanuel? You know, several times, I suppose that people will have been calling him Emmanuel, 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 Emmanuel. But they never had a concise understanding that, excuse me, Emmanuel means God with us. So this person that I'm actually relating with is God. So they related with him shakalali. They related with him flimsily. But Brad Peter saw beyond the flimsiness. He saw reality. They said, this Christ, he is stamped with the image of God. I'm praying that God will just open our eyes to see. Because that is what we jump starts, and that is what we keep facilitating your followership of Jesus, which is discipleship. Go on, man. This song perfectly mirrors God. Yes. 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 To verse 4. Verse 3 and verse 4. 3 and. Yes. Mm. Mm. You have been verse 5 now. It's okay, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Are you noting the issues that we are raising this day? We are raising the issue of your personal understanding of Christ. This song stamped 
with God's image perfectly mirrors God. He carries the nature of God. So in other words, Jesus is God. Jesus is God. And that was what Peter saw, that this is not an ordinary human being. That was why when he met them struggling at the boat. Did you remember? Two times. The first one he looked at a five by that lake of Ganazareth. Did you remember? He borrowed Peter's boat. Because Peter knew that, excuse me, this is not an ordinary human being. So when they borrowed Peter's boat and he used it for crusade, and after the crusade, he told them, launch out your net into the deep. What did Peter say? He said, excuse me, sir, we have toyed all night and caught nothing. Peter was simply saying to them that, excuse me, age-wise, I'm older than you. Fishing-wise, I'm being in this profession for long. But what did Peter say? He said, but nevertheless, nevertheless, at thy word. What did Peter do? He dropped it. The other time, waves was blowing voraciously against their, their, their boat. And they saw, they saw somebody that looked like a ghost was coming towards them. And everybody was crying, yay, our own don't spoil, oh, our own don't spoil, oh, our own don't finish, oh. Wind is blowing. Eh? Eh, eh, ghost. Ghost is coming. In Witumbo, you know, wind and in wind, which one will you choose? We, ah. But he said, I'm not a ghost. What did Peter say? If it is you, bid me to come. Eh? What did you think Thomas would have been saying? Eh? Thomas would have been saying that. <laughs> eh, bro, and your children are this small, though. Their hands have not reached their ears. Look at me like this. It's Ghana must go. You know what they call Ghana must go? Eh? It's a bachelor that is Ghana must go. But you, you have a wife, you have a mother-in-law, uh, but the Bible did not give us an account whether he has a child. But we remember that the Bible said Jesus followed Peter home and he healed his mother-in-law. So Thomas would have been saying, <laughs> uh, Peter, uh, Peter, Peter, Peter. But what was it that made Peter to jump? Uh, what was it? He knew who was speaking to him. You don't understand. He knew who. You know, others were seeing, it, seeing him as ordinary human being. He said, no, this is not an ordinary human being. So what did Peter do? He jumped and he entered the thing. But do you know that when Peter also lost sight of Jesus, what, what happened to him? He began to sink. But what did he also do? He cried. Yeah, save me, save me. And he pulled him up. They entered the boat. They entered the shore. What did you think others would have been saying? Say, ah, Luau, if I had also known, maybe me too, I would have walked on water. So we are saying, sirs and mass, the extent of your followership, the extent of your submission, the extent of your yieldedness, the extent of agreeing to what he tells you is the extent to which you have seen him, to which you have known him. If you have not seen him as the Lord, the fire to him will be hard. In Luke chapter 18, that young man came to Jesus who was rich, who was a ruler, that rich young ruler. He was young, he was rich, he was a ruler. He has three titles in one. And he came to Jesus. And the Lord told him, he said, good master, good teacher, what should I do? 
we were thinking that he has seen Jesus well. That was why he gave Jesus that appellation, good master. Let's check that. Let's see the appellation he gave Jesus in Luke chapter 18. Which appellation did they give Jesus? Luke chapter 18. Good teacher. Luke chapter 18, verse 18. Did you note it? What did your own version say? Luke 18, 18. We are not there. Eh? Wonderful, wonderful teacher. Yes? Good master. Yes? Eh? You know, you will have been thinking that for somebody to have called Jesus wonderful, he must have seen the wonderful part of him. He must have seen the great part of him. But look at the thing. Let me write upon our knowledge of the scriptures. When Jesus now told him, it's okay, you want to follow me? Say yes, sir. Do this, do this, do this. He said, excuse me, sir. All those things I've been doing right from when I was young. He said, it's okay. One thing you lack. One thing you lack. He said, tell me what I lack. I can afford it. Tell me what I lack. I can pay for it. Even if, it, even if I can't pay for it, I, I can facilitate how it will be met. I'm a ruler. And Jesus said, Jesus said, see, Go and sell everything that you have. Give to the poor. Take up your cross and follow me. What? What do you mean? <laughs> I should sell everything. Say yes. Give to the poor. Yes. Take up my cross. Yes. And follow me. You know, the man must have said, excuse me. If he asks me to sell everything and give to fellow rich men, at least, I can come back and say, bros, that money that I gave you yesterday, give me. But you know, when I was small, we used to call an Ottoman Torah, Bambiala. I don't know what they call them is now. You still call them Bambiala. Bambiala that you see here today, you are not sure that you meet him there tomorrow. Even if you meet him there tomorrow, the money, what will, what will I have gone to him? He will have spent it. He said, give to the poor. Take up your cross. Come and follow me. The man could not come to terms with who was speaking to him and why he must defer to him. He could not come to terms with it. So what did he say? The Bible said he left him sorrowing. He did not agree. He went back to his riches. He went back to his honor. He went back to his fame. He went back to everything. He discarded Jesus. Excuse me. Do we not at junctions discard Jesus for other choices? Men that follow through thick and thin, they never had another choice. That was what facilitated the followership of a man like Peter. Time will have failed us to explore a man like Paul. He saw Christ. He understood Christ. Little wonder he followed Christ with the totality of his life. When followership of Christ was not going to be as adverse to his life, he said, excuse me, let me tell you the truth. For me to live is what? Is Christ. For me to die is gain. So I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. Death is not scaring me. I have seen Christ whom I supposed to follow. Excuse me. What personal revelation of Jesus do you have? What personal? You know when I use the word personal, it is just that that is what will keep you going as an individual. 
That is what we make you to make your choice guidedly under Jesus. That is what we inform your choice, your decisions. You are following him. You are constantly saying, what will thou have me to do? Nevertheless, you know, those are the words of a disciple. And you also know that that was the word that Jesus himself used when he got to the Garden of Gethsemane. Excuse me, sir. This thing is hard. Oh, I don't want to die. Nevertheless, not what I want, but I will be done. Who is Jesus to you? Who is Christ to you? Why are you pursuing him? Why are you running after him? Are you pursuing him just for physical materials? Or you are pursuing him because you want that, that eternal life that is inside of him? You want to become a partaker of that divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Is that what you are running after? I'm just praying this day that God will anoint our eyes with eye slap so that we can see well. We can see well and we can follow well. When I was in the, when I was in the, in the, in the children's church, Years, years, years back, there was one song that they taught us that I never comprehended the importance of that song until much more later in life. They said, day by day, dear Lord, for these three things I pray. Did you remember? Eh? To do what? To see thee more, to see you more clearly. Uh -huh. You know, I never knew. To see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and to follow you more nearly every day, day by day. Dear Lord, give me these three things. And excuse me, your discipleship, your commitment to Christ, your followership of Christ will be weak when you have not known whom you are following. When you have not understood who you are following. When you don't know that this is the one that has the word of eternal life. This is Christ. This is God. So when Brad Paul was not going to be praying, you know, I saw Brad Paul praying for all the churches that he founded, all the churches that he established. I saw Brother Paul raising a prayer for the church in Ephesus, which I also want us to use as our prayer even this morning. What was Brother Paul praying for them? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, verse 16, 17, and 18. Ephesians chapter 1, he said, Therefore, from verse 15, I also... After I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give, you, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in his, his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power 
which he walked in Christ when he raised him all from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which to come and he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which he is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all what was the prayer of Brother Paul for the church in Ephesus you know that Brother Paul was a little amazed when he was writing to the church in Galatia he said who bewitched you who lied to you who 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 succeeded in disproving Christ before you that you are now following funnily divine uh, fables? So he was praying for the church in Ephesus. And that, I suppose, must become our own daily prayer. What was he asking God to do for them? Verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that God will reveal Christ to you that God will do something that will make you to also say I have seen Christ I have seen him I am seeing him it's not that I have seen him I am seeing him and so I am following him I'm saying, he said, may God give that to you. That is what we jumpstart. That is what we sustain your followership of Jesus. That woman by the well, that was what jumpstarted our followership of Jesus. That madman of Gadara, that was what jumpstarted a followership of Jesus. All those Susan and everyone that ministered to Jesus, that followed Jesus, that committed themselves to Jesus, what jump started and sustained it is a constant revelation of the personality of Jesus. Once it goes off your mind, followership becomes an, another thing. I wish we can pray this day. And what should be our prayer? I don't want to follow any other thing. Open my eyes that I may see. Can we pray together? Can you cry unto God? Open my eyes, I want to see Jesus. Open my eyes, I want to know Jesus. Open my eyes, Father. Can you just pray? Can you just pray unto God? Lord, please give me a personal understanding of Christ. Let me see Jesus. Please pray for yourself. See how you have been following Shekele, 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 or you are even following at a distance. I'm not sure. Those two disciples on their way to Emmaus in Luke chapter 24, they suddenly became not sure of him again. They said, if we don't know where we are going, at least we know where we are coming from. Let's go back to where we are coming from. Maybe you, you are already going back. Maybe you are also taking steps back. Say, ah, why don't you beg God? Open my eyes, Father. Let me see Jesus. Let me see Jesus. Please pray for yourself. Discipleship will be vague. Discipleship will be by constraint. Discipleship will be a bandwagon effect on you if you are not saying. And they said, they said, they said, they said. But for you, what are you saying? Why don't you beg God? Let's beg God. Our Christian faith, our Christian walk must go from what they said to this that I have found. Please pray for yourself. Lord, show me mercy. Reveal Christ to me. Reveal Jesus to me. Reveal Jesus to me. May I see Christ. 
May I understand Christ in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please pray for yourself. Let every vagueness be done away with. Let every uncertainty be done away with. Let everything that beclouds my vision from seeing, let them be done away with. But Lord, open my eyes that I may see well. Please pray for yourself. The reason why you are not eager to sit at his feet the same way Mary did is because you don't recognize this person. Beg God, Lord, please do something to me this day. Do something to me this day that will make my life to be permanently locked unto you. Please do this for me, Father. Please pray for yourself. For some of us, even to pray is an issue. Talk less of taking him by his words. Talk less of going by what he says. Lord, please show us your mercy. Please help our lives. Please help us. Maybe because you have not seen him, that's why you are still oscillating between two posts. You are still here. You are still there. Your faith has not found a resting place. Why don't you beg him? That woman with the issue of blood, she has done several lala, but when she recognized that Jesus was there, he said, I must touch the hem of his garment. Why don't you beg the Almighty God? Do something to me this day that will end my struggle. That will end my, 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 my going in between two ends. Show me your mercy. Let there be a revelation of Jesus to me. Let there be a revelation of Christ to me so that I can yoke my life. So meet my life. I can by myself entrust my life to him. You can't entrust your life to somebody you, have not, you are not sure of. It is because you are sure of a person. That's why you can entrust your life to him. You can't entrust your life to him except you trust him. Beg the Almighty God, do something to me this day. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. We take one hymn to pray together before we... I, I know my time is up. There's one hymn that was coming to my heart.